campus protests that have turned violent in many cases. We did learn during a news conference moments ago with Mayor Eric Adams in New York that 282 protesters were arrested there on the campus of Columbia University as well as City College. As you can see, this is just some of the video provided by NYPD showing those officers as they were approaching the school to take some of the protesters who had taken over an administration building on Columbia's campus into custody. Again, 282 protesters arrested there. Do want to talk more about all of this here and the situation there, so let's bring in New York State Senator Robert Ort. He is the Senate Republican leader joining us now live. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Well, great to be with you. All right, so first off, we have all seen the videos that have been circulating over the last couple of weeks now showing those protests. Can you break down for me the situation? What goes through your mind as you're watching those videos and watching the situation play out? Well, what goes through my mind is just, a, it's really a failure of, of leadership at so many levels. Uh, obviously, first and foremost, the president of Columbia that it, that it has gotten to this point. Um, it, it's also a failure of administration. As you look across the country, uh, many of these protests had professors participating in them. Uh, they had raised the flag, they had taken down the American flag uh, and raised the, the, uh, the flag uh, of Hamas, uh, you know, at these campuses. Uh, the, the administrations were negotiating. Uh, these folks took over building. They, they hurled anti-Semitic comments. It's just a sad testament to where our higher education institutions are. And make no mistake, this is a manifestation of, of, of many years and decades of indoctrination, of teaching that America is bad, that Israel is bad, that the world is separated between oppressor nations and oppressed peoples. Um, and that's what you see played out here. Obviously, you had a lot of, I think, professional agitators and protesters and Antifa and whatnot who sort of made common cause. But this is a this is a sort of laying it bare, the problem that I think exists on a lot of college campuses at a time when they're asking people to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to send your child to an elite school to have this happen to them, uh, to have the police have to go there and remove college students, uh, uh, terrorist sympathizers from, uh, from, from you know, school buildings. They've, they've, they've blocked kids from getting an education. Um, they, I think many of the uh, graduation ceremonies have been, have been canceled, just a shame what has happened to our institutions of higher learning in this country. We've heard from plenty of Republican lawmakers over the last couple weeks who have called on Columbia's president to resign from her position as these protests have been underway. I want your thoughts on that. What are your thoughts overall on whether she should resign based on what you've seen? I think she should resign uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One, that 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 it it happened in some way to begin with that 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 this uh, lasted as long as it did uh, that there were many professors and other administration officials who 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 were part of these protests but obviously her handling of this um, has has been uh, I think really really terrible um, but also you know there's been no leadership no real leadership from the president on this. From the governor, um, you know, the, the Democrats, the Democratic executives, president, governors, um, ha have been so afraid to criticize, uh, you know, for fear of upsetting, I guess, their progressive, their young base, uh, who obviously feels more sympathy and more uh, solidarity with a terrorist network. Uh, a group of people who would, in many cases, not hesitate to deny these individuals the same right they were <laughs> trying to exercise. Um, they feel more empathy with them than they do the nation of Israel. Uh, New York is home to more Jews than any other place except for Israel. So outside of the nation of Israel, the most Jews collectively live in the state of New York. And so to have this kind of anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-American 
um, uh, protests happening. I think the president has to answer. She obviously answers to the board, I believe. Uh, and, and so I have no, I'm not going to hold my breath that they're going to force her to resign. But I think this has been a failure of leadership at a lot of levels, including hers. What message do you have for these protesters on the Columbia campus, specifically the folks who actually took over that administrative hall and then during a news conference yesterday were asking for the school to essentially provide them food, saying that they had purchased a meal plan and were entitled to it? I want to get your thoughts, what you would say to these protesters. I thought that one press conference with the one young lady, um, Nothing sums up this generation maybe better, or at least these protesters, I should say, better than that press conference. You know, they're they're playing at being uh, uh, terrorists. They're they're playing at being you know uh, uh, provocateurs, and they're going to take over the hall and they're going to resist. Oh, but if you would still please send me my my uh, you know ham and cheese sandwich and my meal plan and my bag of chips and some water that I paid for. Nothing smacks of entitlement and also just a divorce from. You know, these individuals are, are playing at this. This isn't real. If it was real, they wouldn't be, you know, begging for, for food. But they would have made those preparations. Uh, these are kids. Uh, these are young people. Uh, however misguided I may think they are, my real frustration is less with them and more, again, with the professors and the administration at Columbia who've coddled it, who have fostered this, who have who have emboldened them and made them feel like you can you get to decide uh, how the school is run and you get to decide whether we invest or support Israel. You know, when I was 22, I had every right to to feel the way I do. But you know what? Adults didn't have the the responsibility to listen to me because I didn't have the life experience. I didn't have the 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 uh, the wherewithal or the baseline or the perspective to really you know. Uh, offer any constructive uh, thoughts on world matters, on global matters. Uh, these are many, many of these individuals were born after 9-11. They don't remember just a few miles from where they are what it was like and what people who were very similar to Hamas did on that day here in New York. So, you know, on some, on some sense, you know, college kids, uh, I expect stupid things from uh, young people, uh, maybe not to this level, but I do not expect administrators and college presidents and professors who get paid a lot of money and who are adults to sort of coddle it and foster that and show support for this kind of thing. Uh, again, which was, was, they were not always peaceful. They were violent. They took over buildings that didn't belong to them. Um, they interrupted other people's ability to learn, which is the actual reason you're supposed to be there. Uh, and so maybe if they were more uh, focused on being educated and learning and listening, rather than trying to tell the world uh, what what we and in their infinite wisdom should do, uh, you know, um, maybe we, we, this wouldn't have happened. But again, my real ire and frustration and criticism is directed at the people who we pay to educate these kids, and and in some ways less on the actual students. Would you say that anti-Semitism is a problem in the U.S. and specifically, do you feel it's an issue in New York? I think it's a growing problem, right? I don't, I don't know to what level it, it, it is a problem across the country. I know I have seen firsthand, we have witnessed rise, a rise in anti-Semitism, even predating even predating the October 7th uh, attack uh, by Hamas on innocent Israelis and the nation of Israel, even before that. And I think that is that is an intentional move um, in New York, where you have the largest Jewish population. You have organized groups who are aligned with the, with the Palestinian Authority, with Hamas, with other, other um, Muslim or... Um, uh, you know, Islamic extremist movements. Uh, they get educated at our universities. Some of them teach at our universities. Um, and as more of these folks come in, I think the goal really is to divide the United States from Israel. If they can weaken U.S. support for the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel then is made more vulnerable and weaker uh, to nations like Iran, to Hezbollah, to Hamas, 
or, or, or whomever. And so that, I think, is the larger aim here. We can't lose sight of that. Um, and, and that's why I think it is important that we stand up collectively and say that we're not going to tolerate anti-Semitism, that we're not going to, you know, that the United States liberated the death camps in Germany after World War II. The United States was, was one of the critical nations in the founding of the nation of Israel in, in, at, the, at the end of World War II. So, you know, we have a, our, our lineage in supporting the Jewish people, in defending the nation of Israel, uh, especially in New York, but across the country, is very important. And so I think we have to push back when we see moves from either side. But right now on the Democratic left, on the progressive left, a push, uh, a very anti-Semitic anti-Israel, anti-Jewish stance that they are taking. And we have to unequivocally uh, be critical of that and not tolerate it. And, sh and also remind people that the United States stands with the nation of Israel, our only ally, our only ally, really, in the Middle East, the only sort of modern Western democratic country in the Middle East uh, is the nation of Israel. And we should not be shy of supporting them, um, especially after they were attacked on October 7th. My last question here before I let you go, what needs to happen next? As these protests have taken over college campuses, we have seen dozens, really hundreds of arrests that have been made. What, in your opinion, needs to happen next? You know, it's 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 hard to say, um, I guess, from a from a governmental or, or electoral standpoint. What, what I would say is that, you know, I think Students who participate, who go beyond just peacefully protesting, who overtake uh, uh, buildings, who hurl anti-Semitic uh, uh, insults, who engage in violence, they should be arrested. And I think in, in some cases, in many cases, they should be expelled. They should be expelled. This is not, this cannot be in keeping with our institutions of higher learning. I think the federal government, probably more uh, than any other state government, but I'm uh, certainly willing to at the state level, we need to hold these these uh, institutional presidents uh, accountable, whether it's the president of Columbia, whether it's the 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 heads of of CUNY uh, or the SUNY system here in New York. Uh, in fact, our conference has written a letter to the majority leader in the Senate, as well as the heads of higher ed committee and the government investigations committee to br to to bring in the president of Columbia as well as the presidents and heads of the CUNY and SUNY systems to answer about what they're doing to protect Jewish students, but also what are they doing to make sure these kinds of things uh, do not repeat themselves uh, going forward. And uh, we need answers. The government should be able to get those answers. The elected leaders on behalf of the public should be able to get those answers. And I think that's what we need to do. And obviously people need to remember this. Uh, in November, they need to remember that just because it happened 80 years ago does not mean it cannot happen again and that it cannot happen here. Uh, I think this, you know, what we've seen is a real cause of concern for the Jewish community and it should be a cause of concern for every American and every New Yorker. And I would also like to thank our New York Police Department last night for doing a commendable job in a very difficult situation. They did a great job uh, getting those uh, uh, troublemakers and spoiled brats and protesters out of that building, I think, relatively safely without any real incident. Uh, and I commend their leadership and uh, all the officers who took part in that. All right. Senator Ort, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here this morning. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? No, I just I appreciate the coverage you guys have been doing on these protests. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people look and think, what is what the heck is going on in New York State, in New York City? Um, and and it's really, again, it's a failure of leadership at a lot of levels. But I just want to remind people for parents out there who are thinking about sending their kids to schools, pay very close attention to the schools that are that you're seeing this happen in. If it was me, I wouldn't spend one dollar, not one dollar, whether it's my dollar a public dollar, a borrowed dollar. I wouldn't spend one dollar on any of these schools. I don't care how elite they may be uh, when this is what they're turning out uh, from the administration all the way down. So I hope parents and would-be students take note. Senator, thanks again for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.